Welcome to a tutorial video on ink. In this video I'm going to cover tunnels and threads. We're building off the concepts that were introduced in the previous videos in this series. In the first three lines here we see the introduction of a constant dan, a variable fret count equals zero, and a variable freakout count equals zero. We also see the calling on line five here of two different functions, weather and day of the week. Let's pause here and go look at their definitions. Those are defined down here, line 95 for day of the week for this function, and is returning the string result of a shuffle of days of the week. Whether that function, similarly on line 98, is returning the string result of a shuffle with sunny, rainy, clear, or cloudy. We see that over here on the right hand side, the result, it was a clear Monday. And that's line 5. We see the value of the returned result of the function call to weather and the value of the returned result from day of the week. Tunnels and threads, though, are two different approaches to the similar problem of labeled options and gather points. Similar to how we saw in the previous video of gather points that we could collapse options down and have a final using the minus sign option for choices that didn't divert anywhere else. When we're using labeled options, we could check to see if a choice was made and then act on that. A tunnel similarly allows us to take a knot or a stitch and go to it and then come back as if it were a tunnel through the flow. So instead of branching off to a different path, we quickly go to it and then come back, acting similar to a tunnel. And so we can see the first use of that in this extended example right here on line 54. Notice it is using freak out, that knot, which I'll get to in just a second if it's definition, as a tunnel. We know it's a tunnel because it has a double divert. So on line 54, we're diverting to the knot and then diverting back. That's the double divert symbols pointing to the right, starting to point to the knot and then pointing out of the knot on the same line, line 54 here. So when we get to that line, we're checking to see if we're going to freak out. And that's why I introduced the variables at the top, because those variables now come into play in this extended example. So we're using a tunnel here, divert to freak out and come back. Let's go look at freak out then. Freak out here, defined as a knot, starts on line 75. And we see, did I freak out over getting the food choice wrong? and we see a sticky choice no, a sticky choice yes. If we choose yes, then using the tilde we do a little bit of code and we increase the value of the variable freak out count by one using plus plus and then we use curly brackets to show the result of some type of code here, in this case conditional. So we check to see if freakout count is greater than 1. That's our first conditional. If it is, then it was so stressed out, then we just end the story. The flow ends right there. Else, I say I freaked out a little bit, but I kept it under control. And then we return to that knot using that same thing we saw again, the double divert or a tunnel. So within the previous knot, we diverted to freakout. Then we make a choice, yes or no, and then we use the double divert again to go back. And this is an example of a tunnel. So we went to something, we come back to the same place. And we can see that in code over here on the right hand side. And I'll quickly try to get to that. So we see here different choices that we've seen across these different examples. So if I choose pizza, Notice now that was the tunnel. So we diverted to freak out. Then if I choose no, I didn't freak out. We see the double divert. We can tunnel back. Or if I choose yes, we can test some things and the double divert, we can tunnel back. So I'm just going to choose no. And we see coming back to in the previous video, we talked about parameters for knots. We see pizza choice previous choice we talked about pizza so we used a tunnel here to go to freak out we return to this place we diverted back to pizza choices with the parameter pizza which is now the value of the variable previous choice 
And we saw that as we talked about in the previous video, we just talked about having pizza, which is this line 51 now right here. Checking to see if we have talked about anything previous. And as we talked about in the previous video, <laughs> That choice is no longer an option because it was a choice and not a sticky choice, so it didn't stick around. And we see these choices disappear as we do them. So we could talk about salad. We see the same thing for salad here, a tunnel out to freak out. We could go do that and come back. Well, threads are a little different than tunnels. Whereas a tunnel, as we saw here, we can go to a knot and come back to the original knot. Instead of branching off, we can do a tunnel action through the flow using the double divert to go to and a double divert to get back. Threads are the other way. So instead of going to a tunnel, we can pull something else in using similar metaphors that Ink used throughout all of this and describing a flow. So a thread is something we pull towards us. We see that on line 66. Food choices points the other way. Instead of pointing to the right, which we're using as diverts to go to knots, and in this case, a double divert to go to tunnels, threads point to the left. That is, that is, and it's read as, we're pulling the knot to this place. So we see that, we don't freak out over here on the right-hand side, and now we go to sushi. We now see the content of the knot food choices because it's now a thread and it's being pulled into this other knot. So we saw here in pizza choices, we chose sushi. We see that sushi sounds good. We walk to a local sushi place, which is the content of that choice when we made it. And then we're pulling in the content of the knot food underscore choices. It's now a thread, as I said, and we're pulling that in. And now we see here food choices defined on line 70 has its own content. And we see that here and now we see end of story because now we're diverting to the special keyword done. So we see here the two different uses of tunnels and threads. Tunnels we can use to go to a knot, do something or show some different text and route back a double divert as I said several times now. A thread is the other way we can pull a knot in. Both of those allow us very dynamic uses of the flow within ink. So not only can we go to an ink and come uh, go to a knot and come back in ink, but we can pull in other knots using threads, this action of pointing to the left to pull in their content as well. This allows us to create very dynamic stories using across a different concepts that we've outlined in, I've outlined in previous videos here, starting with variables to act on different things, using functions to get results back, and now with tunnels, go to a knot and come back, or threads pull in the content of other knots. This allows us to use two short, shorthands here, tunnels and threads, using the double divert or a left divert for threads to create complex stories in knot, or complex stories in ink. Thanks for watching.